Hi, everyone. Welcome to this photo manipulation webinar hosted by BenQ. So thank you, BenQ, for making this possible. I hope that you're everyone doing well. My name is, for you guys who don't know me, my name is Nemanja Sekulic. I'm a professional photographer, digital artist, and I am a BenQ ambassador. I started my creative journey 20 years ago when I got my first Photoshop as a birthday gift for my 20th birthday. So if you do the math, you know that now I am 40 years young and I'm pretty wild now on this path and I learned a lot of things uh, going through the Photoshop and other stuff, but I'm still learning it. And I think I will learn it all the time because photo manipulation is a world of endless possibilities. You can basically create here anything that you want. So, for example, actually only limitation here is your imagination and, of course, this knowledge of how to use software tools. Fortunately, imagination can be trained, like you're training your body to be stronger, faster, better. So you can do that. There's a lot of people who like to say, well, I don't have good imagination. Fortunately, you can train it. And another thing is the knowledge of how to use the software and, of course, hardware tools. So, for example, the more tools you know, software or hardware, the more fun you will have, the more skills, the more uh, things you know how to do in the real life, the more fun you will have in this endless world of creativity. If you know how to use some tools to create some, for example, props for photo shooting, you can use those props and have richer photo manipulation. If you know how to take your own photos, even better, you can have more fun there. If you know how to use more programs than Photoshop, even better. So before we start, I just want to thank you everyone for participating here. Uh, today we will have a lot of fun. I will tell you what a photo manipulation is, where you can use it. We will go through one photo manipulation here. And at the end, we will have a Q&A section where you can ask me questions. I see there are some questions here. I'm looking on another screen, so I'm not looking at a camera right now. And I will go at the end to uh, questions and we will have some nice uh, answers there so make sure to prepare your questions also make sure to check out your emails after this webinar is finished you will get an email with the discount code with the coupon code for 10 percent discount if you want to purchase a bank you professional series monitors and for all you guys who are from uh, serbia you will still get the same possibilities, the same coupon code, but with that difference that you need to go physically to the store of leased computers and uh, show them the code in order to get a discount. You will have the details of the store address and everything in the email. Okay, so now that we covered this, let me just see these. There are a lot of you guys, so thank you one more time for joining me here. So today what we will do, we will create this photo manipulation that you see here on the screen. But before we do that, let me first tell you what a photo manipulation is. Photo manipulation is exciting process of combining elements from multiple sources into one believable realistic result. You don't need to use just combination of photos. You can use combination of photos and drawing or photos and uh, painting or even photos and some 3D elements. So that's why I said the more skills you have, the more tools you know, the more fun you will have in this endless world of creativity. And also, to be able to create a realistic photo manipulation, you need to follow certain rules. I like to say that there are basically three important rules in photo manipulation in order to create a realistic result, and that's the perspective of all the elements that are included in the scene needs to be need to be the same. So you need to take a photo of all the elements from exactly the same angle with exactly the same focal length, basically exactly the same lens, and in order to have everything really nice and smooth blended. Then all the elements need to have the same lighting conditions. So all the elements need to be lit in from exactly the same way, like for example, the background is. And the third one, the color of all the elements needs to be met. So you need to color correct all the elements before you finalize your photo and apply final color grading. Those are three important rules that can be bent sometimes because the rules are there to be bent. And when you have more skills in photo manipulations, where you uh, have more expertise, you will know when and how you can bend certain rules. So then 
you will find out that the perspective doesn't need to be exactly the same. You can find your way through if that's not the case. Also, the lights need, doesn't need to be exactly the same. You can paint some lights if you like uh, to the models or objects if you're good at that. And also, uh, you can do some tricks there to match that light to be like it's exactly the same. The point in photo manipulation is to trick the viewer's eyes to think that this is actually a realistic scene, that all the elements belonging there. It doesn't matter if the scene is, for example, sci-fi scene that is not uh, realistic in, in our world, but you will see that all the elements are really nicely bl blended there. So let's just check out here. Perfect. Okay, so photo manipulation can be used in so many ways. There are so many applications for it. So you can create Hollywood movie poster, and that's awesome way to use it. You can create book covers, magazine covers. You can uh, do some really nice composite images for some marketing campaign and have really nice marketing campaign out of that or something for your personal use just to, to have fun and so on and so forth. So basically that's that's like short compressed way of what is photo manipulation and where, where you can use it. And now we will jump to Photoshop like I like to say in my YouTube tutorials, let's jump straight into Photoshop and let the fun begin. So we will start with the background. But before we start with the background, let me explain you something. I said at the beginning that all the elements need to be matched in perspective, lights and colors. So imagine the scene that you're outside taking your camera, putting on a tripod and you're taking a photo of an empty street on the ground level. So your camera is almost down there on the ground level. And uh, you're just, took a photo of that background. So that background already has some kind of lighting like this uh, background here in Photoshop has uh, one light basically from the sun. So the street can be lit in from the sun or maybe it's a night scene and the street can be lit in from some street lights, artificial lights. And if you want to put a model in that scene, you need to take a photo of the model from exactly the same perspective, ground level, from the same angle, tilted the camera, exactly the same and with the same focal length, the same lens. As you are there in that street and you're saying, all right, I don't want to take a photo manipulation, let's call a model. You're calling a model, waiting there, take a copy of whatever model is coming, standing there in front of camera, you take a photo and you have a photo actually with the model in that street. Those kind of conditions you need to achieve, like the model was really shut there. So when you're in the studio, you're matching the lights, the perspective, and the later colors in Photoshop and doing that. Photoshop is just one of the tools in photo manipulation world. So a lot of people are thinking that Photoshop is everything. No, Photoshop is just one of the tools, but it's really powerful too. I use Photoshop as the place where I combine actually everything together, but there are so many tools where you can create certain elements that you can later implement in your photo manipulation. So here with this photo, as you see here, my desktop, you can probably see it. Okay, so somebody say that cannot hear the audio. So I think, guys, you can hear me. So just type here if you can hear me, is everything okay? This is the, the final result that we want to achieve. So it's always good. Okay, it's okay. Yes, thanks, thanks, perfectly. So, uh, it's always good to, to first take a photo of a background. Why? Well, because the background will already define everything. It will define the perspective, the lighting conditions, it will define the, the angle, everything is there. So now when you take a photo of a model, you just need to match those things on a model in the studio, it's pretty easy. Or if you're searching online for some stock photos, again, it's much easier to find a photo of a model with some lighting conditions similar to the background. Then if you just rather, if you're uh, shooting the, the model first, and then you want to shoot the background to match those conditions that are on the model, it's really hard. The perspective, it's not a problem. You can match the perspective, but lighting, sometimes if the model has some crazy lighting on, on it, maybe some color lights or whatever, sometimes it's impossible, really like really impossible to do it. So that's always better and much easier to take a photo of the background first. So here I took a photo. This is uh, one mountain in Serbia. It's called the uh, Stara Planina, or if we translate it in English, it's like old mountain. It's a beautiful view. As you can see, it was a sunset time. 
and uh, we have beautiful landscape view here and this is the background that my client wants to use for this project so this is the photo that i made for one of my clients then the second thing is to take a photo of a model so here is the photo of a naked model okay so why is the model naked a i like to take photos of a naked model b a a a no, actually i'm joking the model is naked because a because we needed a dress for the model that we didn't have so my idea was to take a photo of naked model because of the a and uh, i'm joking of course and uh, to make dress later in uh, some 3d software because that kind of dress we couldn't get on a time maybe it wasn't expensive it's hard to get and so on and so forth so we made the dress. actually i made the dress in the 3d and as you can see here in the model we try to match these conditions we have one light source from the front and this this light source is bouncing the light from all other elements and that's why the back side of these rocks actually the back side of the background is lit in two so here we have the model and the model is lit from that light source that is somewhere here as you can see and uh, it has this rim light from the front like there is a sun and of course some small light from the back just to, to light uh, to lit the the backs here okay and the first thing that we need to do here is to extract the model out of the background and to put it back right here there are so many ways in photoshop how you can extract the model out of the background i already have it extracted here just to save time for this but actually i will show you how i did this extraction in the hair and everything there are so many tools so many things that you can do exactly the same thing in photoshop and uh, my favorite tool is basically quick selection tool it's this one here and with the quick selection tool you can make it bigger and you can just quickly that's why it's named quick selection tool you can quickly select the model and that's perfectly okay but sometimes i like i'm lazy sometimes you know and i like for photoshop to do the heavy lifting instead of me so i will save photoshop right select subject and wait for a few moments maybe drink a coffee and then photoshop will select everything for me as you can see right here but it's not perfect so i will zoom this you will see that this side right here and this part is not perfect at all another side is really good so this is pretty pretty nice maybe this part right here but we will fix that and of course the hair is total mess so how we will wait uh some people are having trouble to see what i'm doing so do you see my screen here guys can you see my screen right here some people are seeing just my webcam okay so yes yes okay thank you thank you thank you all right so <clears throat> let's continue you can see right here that we have some problems and photoshop didn't manage to select this because photoshop is making selections based on the contrast either color contrast or luminosity contrast and you can see right here the colors are closed and the uh, luminosity is pretty close so that's why we need to do it manually so we can use the quick selection tool and just trace it manually and fix those edges or we can later use a brush tool and correct the mask so this is one way and let's leave this for another way okay so this is like that and we will fix this one with a quick selection tool too and now the hair this is not tricky part at all because this, these are really nice sharp edges and uh, and you can you can really easily select this but the hair it's pretty tricky so whenever you're taking a photo of a model with messy hair whatever hair usually a female model because there are a lot of flying hairs around etc if you want to have really nice selection you need to think in advance you need to think what you will do with the model in what kind of background you will put it in order to be able to extract the hair easier so here the model has <clears throat> darker hair and the background is a bit lighter it's much lighter actually than uh, than the hair if i put the dark background right here and i have this dark hair game over <laughs> game over so there is a way again to do that it's time consuming it's so boring and tedious process but 
this is why you need to think in advance. It's better to refine these edges here. It's much easier than to play with the hair. So to extract the hair, I'll go to select and mask. And again, leave the Photoshop to do heavy lifting. I will just choose this refine edge brush and I'll just go and paint over this, as you can see. And Photoshop will actually try to make a difference between the hair and the background and to remove the background for me. So this is it. Let's see. Really nice. Maybe here a little bit and a little bit on the other side. I'm quickly checking those questions here. Okay, everything is okay. And this is pretty easy process. It can take some time, but nothing special, nothing hard to be done. And this is it. So I'm pretty happy with this. I will press OK. And this is the selection. It, it's not uh, visible here that all these hairs are uh, actually selected, but we will create a layer mask. And uh, for that, what I forgot to do, I forgot to make a copy of this, this uh, layer right here. So I will save this selection, select, save selection model, right? And now I will deselect and make a copy, control command J just to make a copy of the layer and delete the layer mask right here. And now I will go and load that selection that we saved. So right there, model. And this is the selection that we just made. All right. So now if I create a layer mask, you will see everything is really nice extracting this except the arm, etc. So what I like to do here in order to continue refining this is just creating a new solid color layer, choose any color that is different than the model has on it. So maybe green and then go to the mask, use the brush and with brush around 70, 80% hardness, I can go with 100% opacity and just Paint back with the white. I will paint back parts that I want to be visible. And like this, as you can see. And with the black, I can remove parts. And I'm using, I'm always using from 2007, actually. I'm using a pen tablet, pen with the pressure sensitivity. It's much easier to work with a pen than to work with the mouse because first of all, you're more precise with the pen. It's more natural. You start to, to get used to the pen when you were a child. And uh, yeah, but newer, newer generation are starting to get used to the mouse when in that age, probably so. Right, so another way, why, one other reason why I like to use a pen is much faster workflow. So this is, this is how you make a selection. When you're done, I will now use this properly selected model. It's exactly the same procedure. When you're done, you just need to copy this and to paste it on the background. This is the whole image, but I just want to paste this, sorry. So let's say apply layer mask, paste this. And this is our model right here. It's a big, we will refine the size a bit later. But now the next thing, what I like to do, I like to show you how I made the dress and that piano. So in a photo manipulation world, as I already said, you can create anything that you want, a, literally anything. So only imagination is your only limitation is your imagination skills to do it. And here the idea was to put a piano in the scene in order to bring the piano here in real life. First of all, it's expensive. It's huge logistic behind this. You need to rent a truck, the guys who will actually bring it. You need to find the piano. And the terrain here is pretty rough. It's not easy to come here. And also you need to be really careful not to scratch the piano or even break it, something that then it will be even more expensive. So it's much easier to create a piano, to find a piano, a photo of piano online, or in my case, because I didn't want to search for a photo of piano with those special angles and light conditions, it's much easier for me to make a uh, piano in a 3D. So here is the piano. I just did this, I don't know, in an hour. It's pretty easy process, it's not so hard at all. I didn't make the inside of piano because I will not use it. I will just use this outside part for a photo and I render it out in proper angles, proper lighting, and then I have piano there also with the dress 
here is a dress. So that's why the model is naked. It's not the A option, actually. It's because I need the model to be naked to be able to fit inside the dress. Here it is. And I did made this dress. It took me maybe two hours or so, but we saved a lot of money and uh, time to get in the dress. And also I have a model right here that I use to model the dress around. And I positioned this model in the similar pose like I would have here with my actual model. So as you can see, the poses are pretty similar. They're not exactly the same, but they're same enough, right? And to be able to put everything here in the scene when you're doing, when you're combining 3D elements with the photos, you can do a lot of heavy lifting in a 3D. So here, let me show you. Let's go to this scene right there. I already made the size of the dress and the size of piano and the position of both of them properly here, put it on this background and then render this out. And now in Photoshop, I have the proper size, both the dress and the piano. So that in that way, it's much easier for me to nail the size of the model. So I render this out. Let's go to the Photoshop. Let's go here to the dress. And of course, you can pretty easily make a selection of the dress because in a 3D, you can render it out with the mask so i will put the dress right here see this is the size of the dress the model is too high too big so this is always name your layers because you can have pretty big mess right here later and if you don't have organized layers you will lose a lot, lot of time making this making this uh, searching through the layer. So I'm just checking the comments one more time just to see if everything is okay. Okay, we will go to the questions later. And uh, let's bring the piano here. So this is the piano. Copy and just paste it here in the scene. All right, and I will put the piano somewhere here probably like this. Let's see. We can Put it like that or we can always move it but this is the the okay position of the piano and now is the part where i want to put the model inside the dress this is pretty easy part actually what we need to do is let's bring the piano all the way down what we need to do is just to make the model smaller put it over the dress and remove delete the parts that we don't want to be visible and i will show you one cool tip here and the trick I will make a copy of the model, Control or Command J, hide the real model. And here, if I transform the model with Control or Command T and make a model smaller. So, for example, I make it small like this. And I say, hmm, this is too small. Make me bigger, make me bigger. I'm too small. Okay, okay, I will make you bigger. So, this is a model bigger. Now that we make the model smaller and make it bigger again, you can see we lose the quality. The quality is awful. Why? I don't know why. It's just yeah. no. I, of course, I know why. It's because see this square right here, this rectangle. Actually, there are certain amount of pixels inside of it. And when you make the model smaller, when you make the rectangle smaller, those pixels are not anywhere anymore there. They are outside of that uh, rectangle area. And when you press enter, they are just lost forever. And when you bring the model back to any size. What is going on? Photoshop is artificially implementing some pixels instead of those pixels that needs to be there originally. It's calling inter interpolation. So Photoshop is interpolating those pixels and uh, basically by copying surrounding pixels. And that's why we are losing the qualities. You can see the quality is awful. So how to avoid this? I will delete this right now. To avoid this, there is one really simple trick. Just put the model inside the smart object. So right click on the layer, convert to smart object. Now we have this small icon right there. And we are actually playing now with like a shortcut of a model, an instance of a model. The, mo the real model is inside that smart object box. So now if we make it smaller, like this, and then, oh, I want to be bigger. No problem, let's make it bigger. Like this, zoom it, you can see it's preserved the quality. Awesome. 
So this is one way how you can do it. Now I want to match the model with this res. So I will lower the opacity right here and try to try to match everything. So make the model smaller. This is just playing around with Photoshop. So probably this looks okay. Let's see if I make it a bit smaller. Something like, like this, I think. I will press OK. And I always like to zoom out a lot. Sometimes I like to zoom out quite a lot to see what is going on there, actually. So this looks pretty good. Now I will create a layer mask right here and I will erase everything that I don't want to be visible. So let's go with, with, with. Right click, all right, around 80 or so percent, and erase the pants. I don't need the pants. Don't get me wrong. Okay, I'm just erasing the part of the image. All right, and and here too, I don't need this part at all. So let me see. This part is pretty good. I just I always like to erase more than I need it, and then bring back things, then to figure it out where are the edges. So here. And actually, there's a way like you can rotate your head, but if you press R on a keyboard, you can actually rotate the canvas. So it's much easier. But sometimes I'm really I'm really doing this. No, I'm really rotating my head. I totally forgot about that option. So that's normal, I guess. Okay, so as you can see, I just want to bring back those parts right there. And with the escape, you're bringing back regular orientation of the screen. And now that I mentioned the screen, guys, for this kind of works, uh, basically any kind of photo manipulation or any kind of graphic works, the monitor is one of the most important tools because the monitor is there to show you all the details, all the colors, if the colors are off, you're going to print company, print company will give you some different colors. You will say, ah, oh, they're, they're not doing their job well. Well, you don't have a good monitor properly or not well calibrated. And uh, I'm using this BenQ Professional Series monitors, SW271 and PD3200. And they're both great sharp monitors with 99% uh, of Adobe RGB color gamut so that means for guys who are not familiar with the colors, that means that it can show you huge amount of colors. You can see a lot of colors. If you have a monitor that, that, that cannot show you that, then you cannot see all the colors that the web, uh, the, the print company will actually print it later and so on and so forth. So the monitor is really important to, to, to make all the details sharp, to show you everything in a nice, proper way, and so on and so forth. So I always recommend these monitors. It's not just because I'm a Banky ambassador. I first use this monitor, then I become Banky ambassador. So they're really a uh, warm recommendation from my side. So this is pretty much OK, guys. We have the model. We have the dress. One thing that I don't like here is the color of the dress so this yellow color is mm, okay but not there so let's first group these things together control or command g may name it model and let's go inside go to the dress and there are so many ways how you can change a dress color probably the easiest way is to go with the hue and saturation clip it to affect only the dress and just just change the color like this this is something that i i want but this is okay sometimes it will make some artifacts. Sometimes you will not have control of the darkest area, brightest area, and so on. So it's OK to use it. But what I prefer, I will delete this. I prefer to use the gradient map because it's awesome. As you can see, this is piece of art, masterpiece, actually, to have something like this. Actually, this is really interesting. OK, guys, the webinar is over. I, I, I did it. I, I finished the game. OK, so I need to clip it to affect only the model, actually the dress. And I need to change this to this black and white, OK, to shadows and highlights. And now what I like to do is to click in the middle and then change this color. And while I'm changing this color, I'm basically changing the color dress. You want white dress? You're going to wedding? No problem. You want black one, dark one, 
however you want, you can have it here, change to any tone, any saturation and luminosity you want. So basically I want some color right here, maybe a little bit more towards the red. And another beautiful thing using this method is, so for example, I want this color, maybe like that. I will press OK. And here is the part where you can have some magic going on around. So first of all, if you move this, you can make dress darker or brighter. These are like a mid-tones. So you can make mid-tones more darker or brighter. Also, you can make the shadows more darker or not like that, undo it this tiny thing or a little bit brighter. So whatever you want. I want to make shadows a little, a little bit darker, maybe the overall a little bit brighter. Also with this, now you cannot see it, but let's go back to 50. With this, you're making the dress more shiny, but because we have just a tiny bit of rim light here, you cannot see it or more matte as you can see. So I will leave this right now at the middle and I will go with, with this something like Let's see, something like that. See, we are getting better contrast. And I will press OK. And if this is not what I like, if this is maybe too saturated or whatever, I can always go back here, click on this, and just change, change the color to any color, any other color that I like. So I will, I will leave this color. OK, let's leave it for, for this this time like that so whenever you're combining 3d elements with the photography 3d elements are so clean uh, without any kind of grain and the uh, noise and the noise and grain are there because the imperfection of the sensor and so on and so forth and you can see the background has a lot of noise here wherever you're looking at it, if you know what the noise is you can see a lot of noise and the dress and the piano are pretty clean as you can see so we need to add a bit more noise here to make it a little bit more realistic to blend it better with the background so for that i will go to the dress right there create a new layer press shift and backspace to get this fill dialog box choose 50 percent gray and fill it with that and now we have some crazy mess until we put this from normal to soft light blending mode now this doesn't have any kind of of affection here and why did I do that if I don't have it here well because now on this I will apply noise so go to noise add noise and we zoom it see now we have a noise similar like a background so we can add a lot of noise of course we would not do that and we can add maybe two around two percent something like this is pretty okay maybe even less something like that all right and now this is much better when you're zooming the photo i pretty much like it what i don't like here is this arm it's behind the model i want to be in the front of the model of the dress sorry so it's easy fix go to the models layer mask go to the dress control or command click to load the selection of the dress and just use the black color and paint it out so this is it this is all you need to do and the hand is just in the front of the dress I will do exactly the same with the piano. I will just alt and drag this to make a copy of exactly the same settings of the noise and clip it to affect only piano, but I need to get out of the group. So clip it to clip something. It's to hold alt or option and just click in between those two layers. And now if you see the piano has noise like other things here, maybe it's too much for the piano. You can always lower the opacity and that's basically it. So one important thing here is whenever you're doing, especially compositing, this photo manipulation thing is always make breaks, go away from the computer, rest your eyes, just do some things because you will have different perception of the things. Maybe you will see that the model is too big or the piano is too small or whatever you're doing, you will have better impression when you're just walk walk away from for maybe five ten minutes two minutes it doesn't matter just go walk away from it and also another important tip is just make everything smaller make everything bigger and see the difference here and another thing what i like to do is to temporarily merge everything together into one layer shift control alt e or shift command option e on the mac and then 
inverted. So controller command T, right click and flip horizontal and see if this has sense. If, because when you flip it, you will start to see the things differently. Maybe you will see maybe something does not have sense because you, you, your eyes are used to a certain position of the element. So now I see even more that these legs of the piano are mm, crazy, like the piano it's on this rock than before and so on and so forth. So I will delete this. This is just one pro tip for you guys. Now my eyes are really used to this and these legs are not bothering me too much like it was when I inverted everything. So let's play with these legs. First, let's, let's see where the model will be. Let's position the model. Let's position the piano. So let's make the piano somewhere wait piano okay probably somewhere here then i want to put a model like this somewhere maybe just to see maybe like that okay then we will go to piano create a layer mask and just erase everything that needs to be behind the this rock so i want piano to be behind rocks so just paint with the black Let's paint even more, as you can see, and then bring, bring back some details here, like this. And also, have in your mind that I'm a little bit rushing it here because of the time sake of this webinar. I don't want to do this for two hours, but I can actually. And I always like to play with these things a little bit longer. That I'm doing in all my tutorials. It is how it is. So before I continue with that, I can just unlink the link between the mask and the piano and see if I want to move the piano maybe a little bit more down, more up, as you can see. So maybe I will position the piano right here and a little bit like this. This is much better. Now let's reposition the model too. So like it's holding the finger somewhere on these keys okay and then let's go right here and delete this let's see what is the rock here this is the rock and this is pretty nice so this is pretty nice now we have impression that actually this rock is in the front of piano and that's really nice so basically we position all the elements in the scene together and now there is a part where we need to color correct it we need to match the brightness of all the elements and uh, to add some details like shadows and some reflection and so on and so forth. So this is a part that you can do it for an hour or you can do it shorter like I will do today because of the time sake for this webinar. But this is really important part. So whenever you're doing something like this, especially some small details, invest the time for that, play with this, enjoy the moment, play some nice music. I like to usually play some smooth jazz when I'm editing my photos to relax a little bit and that's really cool another tip remember this this is again really a good tip is to from time to time especially when, when you're working with the colors turn everything into black and white for these monitors that i'm using it i have a one really nice uh pack to to change the buttons i cannot show you now because of the web camera but you can go on my YouTube channel and check out the review of these monitors. And I can just, with the press of the button, I can change everything into black and white, the whole image into black and white and change between different uh, color settings that I pre-program my monitor to do. So it's really cool, express thing to do. Uh, I cannot show you that because I already said you, but there is one other thing that you can do right now is to go and find black and white adjustment layer, put it on top of everything and just, work in this mode for a while, especially if you're color correcting or color grading everything, just look at the black and white version of the image for a while and then hide it or delete it and you will see the colors a bit better. Okay, so what I like to do here, I like first to change the color of the piano. You can see that the piano, if you have a trained eye, you can see that the piano is a little bit more warmer than I like to be. You can see the shadows of the rocks and everywhere here has a bluish tint. There are, so, there are so many ways how you can color correct things. You can use curves, you can use 
color balance, you can use selective colors, you can use levels, uh, you can use certain techniques to see if the colors are properly matched between the, the objects in the scene. So many ways. I covered a lot of them in my YouTube tutorials. You can follow the, there too, the tutorials only dedicated to those techniques. But here, what I will do, I will go to piano and create color balance adjustment layer. This is it. And I will clip it to affect only the piano. And I know that my shadows, the darker part of piano needs to be more bluish, as you can see right here on the rocks and the ground right there that is in the shadow. So I will just go to mid tones and make them blue a little bit, a little bit say, and a little bit magenta. And I will go to the shadows and do the same. So a little bit blue, like, Let's go with the arrows, minus one, maybe minus, minus one. So this is pretty cool. So now it's much better. Maybe they're too much blue. Something like this. I like to do this thing by eyeballing it, just by, by instinct. Usually I, I like to do that. Sometimes when I'm completely not sure and I'm, I'm having trouble managing the colors, I do one of the techniques to be able to correct that. But usually this is the way that I like to do it. So. Now let's go and see the model. And the model here, it's pretty okay for, for this scene. So what bothering, is bothering me here is the brightness of the backside of the model, the dress and her backs and also the piano. It needs to be a little bit darker. So let's play with the lights. You can see that the rocks are pretty dark right here. And the model is pretty bright, like it's really lit from, from the back. And to untrained eyes, maybe you will not know what exactly is the problem, but you will see oh, something is off. If you have a trained eye, you will momentarily know what, what it is. But for some people who are first time in this uh, field of um, graphic design, maybe you will say, wow, this is, this is okay, this is awesome, we don't need to do anything. You need to do a lot of things here actually, but it takes some time and experience. Okay, so let's go with, with, with the model first. I will go with the curves. I will go with the curves adjustment layer, clip it to affect only the model and make the model darker. So this is how I like to make the model darker. There is one technique I will show you right now. There is one technique that you can use to make your life a bit easier. Again, it's guessing. It's not like scientific technique, but it's it's pretty cool. So you need to use a threshold adjustment layer. And how this works, this is crazy, some crazy things on the screen. Everything that is left from this slider will be black. Everything that is right from this slider it will be white. So if you move everything to the left, we will see everything white because of the right side of the slider. And now when you start to move it to the right, you will first see First thing that appears here are the darkest part of the image. So everything that is the most dark part of the image, it will start to appear first. And then you will see a little bit more less dark parts than the mid-tones and, and so on and so forth. But the point here is that I know that these parts are mid-tones and I want to match the colors, actually the luminosity of the backside of uh, this model, similar to these tones here. So when this starts to be black, I want my model to be even darker than this. So this is how I like it. And uh, this is what I did with the curve. So you can see they're similar, similar behaving when the shadows are start appearing and, and so on and so forth. You can do the same with the highlights. You can go on the other side and when, see this, this bright part right here, this is something that mm, there are no informations here. There, this part is blown out. So it's completely 100% white. So if you start to move it to the left, First, the sun will appear because it's the brightest part on the image, then all other things. And you will see if something needs to be a little bit brighter or darker from the highlights part. So this is a cool tip. I will now delete this. Now, this is my model, but I don't want to be like that. So maybe just a little bit brighter. And I want to invert the layer mask, Control or Command I. And I want to paint everything back with my brush. So with the white brush, I'm painting it. And also I want really soft brush like this. And I want to start with maybe 30% opacity and just paint back some details here on the back side of the arm. I need to bright the, brighten this part of the arms. Of course, I want dress to be a little bit darker. I can do that 
even by changing the color and everything here in the model group in the gradient map adjustment layer but this is another way how we can do it and of course you can spend a lot of time on uh, dodging and burning the bags and to shape it a little bit differently to make it a little bit better so let me see i want to look at the, okay we will go to that later and now the model is pretty nice here maybe it's too saturated we will see that later and now i want to create another adjustment layer and to actually curves not exposure sorry let's delete it curves and clip it to affect only the model and make some things brighter so what i want to make brighter invert this i want to make these parts brighter because especially you can see this is a piano it's white color and the white will reflect the light back to the model so this this part needs to be much brighter than actually it is right now so also here this needs to be a bit brighter the beauty of this is that you can do everything just by playing with the dodge and burn you can make the part of the dress brighter to add even more rim light here and so on and so forth and you can play with this really long time so this is pretty nice let me see let me let me show you before see and after much better so before everything and after color correcting the backs are now too flat too dark and uh, we can change that of course by playing here a little bit more or less with some dodging and burning but i will not spend too much time now the point here is to you understand what you need to be what is what is need to be done right there okay now that we finish almost finish that we need to play uh, to do exactly the same thing with the piano so let's go to the piano right there and go with the curves again i want to make the piano a bit darker like that invert it and now just paint it with white color maybe 20 percent 30 percent opacity and just paint these parts a little bit darker especially here okay and we can go with the inside parts a little bit darker dodge and burn is the technique of shaping reshaping the objects or just uh, equalize some darker uh, shadows highlights and uh, mid-tones and uh, changing some imperfections with the dodge and burn you can make some dance and bumps you can uh, make a flat object more 3d and so on and so forth and here i will be using dodge and burn to paint shadows and paint lights on the object in order to equalize the brightness of in this case piano here with the scene so this is it and this is before it was too bright now it's okay next thing that we need to do here is to make some shadows so here the shadow is pretty straightforward because we have a model the slide source is practically in the front of the model and the shape of the shadow will be practically exactly like the shape of the model if the sun is more on the side of the model then the shape of the shadow will be completely different you know it will be like you're turning like like this on the side and this is the profile of the shadow that's the shape of the shadow so if the shadow is is the light source is in the front of you your silhouette will basically be the shape of the shadow if the light source is moving more left and right it's similar like you're rotating your silhouette is rotating and the camera is facing the same direction so you're changing the shape of the shadow it's a little bit complex but sometimes the shadow it can be really complex but this is the basics okay so to do that let's go inside the model and make the selection of the model how to do it really easy actually control click on the model and shift control click on the dress so now we have selected everything now what i like to do i like to create a new layer just below the dress by holding control or command on the mac and clicking on a new layer you're making a new layer below the current layer if you're just clicking on the new layer it will make it above now i will fill this layer with some color so let's choose the color let's choose the color of the ground right here something like like this press ok and fill it by pressing alt and backspace or option and backspace and you cannot see anything because the shadow is below the model but now i will press ctrl or command t 
right click and flip vertically. So now you can see the shadow. I'll move it down, okay, and move it a little bit on this side because sun is hitting from this direction. So we need to match this, something like this. Let's move this part here and this part right there. So this is a little bit above the ground. That's why the shadow is not completely uh, flat with the dress. And uh, I will press OK for now. And I will uh, put this into multiply blending mode. Now, the shadow is too harsh. The edges are too harsh. As you can see right here, the edges are a little bit softer because there are so many clouds that are basically making the light a bit softer. So we need to do exactly the same for the shadow. So I will, what I will do, I will actually go to a filter blur and i will blur the shadow a little bit so let's see we can blur it for maybe let's go with a 12 or 10 let's go let's go with a 10 10 it's okay but now you can see some halos here you're obviously seeing this that's because we have the shadow in the same group where the model is and some crazy um, because we have applied the multiply blending mode and um, this is on pass through and Photoshop is sometimes doing crazy things with that. Let's name this shadow. The solution is just to move the shadow outside the group. That's it. Now you will have normal shadow, regular shadow. But now what I like to do, I like to create a layer mask right here and uh, just to go with the gradient tool and to make shadow choosing this one or yeah, this great. This can be good gradient, but I need to move black color here so black to transparent and i will just make the shadow more opaque actually more transparent here more opaque right here why well because that's how these shadows are behaving it's darker closer to the object and it's brighter away from the other object and also the 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 blur of the shadow it's more blurry when you're away from the object so this is what I will do. Maybe lower the opacity a bit or no. This is this is pretty cool. And also I can use the smudge tool and just go right here and smudge it. And with the smudge tool, I'm making the shadow a little bit more blurry. Also, I can reshape position of the shadow, moving it left and right, up and down, whatever I want. So here you can see I'm moving this part. And this tool is pretty processor heavy. So don't be crazy with too crazy with this, but it is how it is. Okay, so we have a shadow here. Let's go and refine it a little bit with the gradient tool. I want to make a little bit brighter here. Actually, what we can do, we can go to the mask, choose a brush, and go with a really soft brush, maybe 10% hardness, and just with the black color, just erase parts of the shadow right there. And that's pretty cool. That's one way. Another way is to add another shadow because I like to say that there are three types of shadows. We have a contact shadow, main shadow, and ambient shadow. Contact shadow is that small black, maybe you can see on the webcam. See this, this black around my, my finger? That's a contact shadow, small. Then we have a main shadow from the main light source and ambient shadow from the light be bouncing from other objects or from other light sources. So we can add a new layer here, put it in a multiply blending mode and just paint, paint right there. Just with maybe 50% opacity, yeah. 50 or 40, and just paint it right here. Also guys, what I like to do here is to add some uh, grass parts about the dress. So we can go about the model right here. This is, let's name this, this is contact shadow. CS, contact shadow. Okay, we can go right here, about the model and name this grass. And we can paint some grass strokes. I can right click and go and find legacy brushes and there is grass brush. We have two of them. We have this one, let's make it bigger just to see. This is one shape and this is another one with three different uh, parts. So let's go with this one. And the default bra brush is like this. We need to change it because this is not what we want. Press F5, uncheck the transfer because you don't want to change the opacity. That's perfect. Let's bring back to 100. And uh, color dynamics can be 
Okay, so let's see what is the changing the brightness. We can change the brightness if we go with this all the way up. We'll change the brightness of each stroke and see how different brightness we have here. But maybe we don't want that. We just want to change between background and foreground. So we want to make background maybe darker. And foreground is actually foreground is darker, background is opposite. Foreground is lighter, the background is darker, and then we can paint with this. Also, we can flip it, and again, we will get a bit different result. I even want to make it even more dark, and uh, this part a little bit darker too. And now I want to go to brush tip shape, increase the spacing because this is too much for me. Yeah, this is cool. So I just want to add certain grass here and right click and change the angle. Maybe I want a few this side. See? And we are like covering the grass with this. Of course, you need to invest more time here. I will go with the layer mask, right click and go back to regular soft round brush and just with maybe 50% opacity, just paint back these parts just to blend it better, or maybe 20% of us, to blend it better with the real uh, grass. And also, I can make it darker with the curves adjustment layer. So here it is. I'm just blend it better with, with this. So you can see, now we have these parts, like you can make it even more dense, however you want, just to make impression that actually the dress is lying down on the ground. Also, we can do exactly the same for the piano here. So where is the piano? It's right here, create a new layer grass number two and we can use exactly the same brush that we created here so 100 percent opacity and just just paint it like let's rotate it back like this and we will make it darker don't worry so here it is this is pretty nice maybe this a little bit higher grass okay then i will create a layer mask Go with the soft round brush and just erase everything here and make this part a bit darker. So I can use again curves, adjustment layer, clip it to affect only that, make it darker. And here it is. So this is before, this is after. Really nice result. We are hiding this inside the grass. We can go to a piano, where is it? Piano layer mask and with. Uh, Around 20% of us, we can even hide the legs more into the grass like that. Maybe here, this wheel of, of it a little bit more down. Also, we can go right here, control click and make the piano shadow, PS for piano shadow, and do exactly the same thing. Just choose some color from the ground, a little bit darker, put it in multiple banding mode, just paint. I want to paint it 100% opacity and then we don't need it here. We do, actually, we just need for this leg. And I will just lower the opacity a little bit. So this is it. And uh, we are basically done with these, these things right there. What we can do now, if you want to make this even more realistic, there are so many small details, guys, that you can tweak here. But we, we don't have time for everything. But I will tell you what we need to do. I will show you quickly. See the piano. The piano is... Piano is reflective so it will reflect parts of the background and uh, if you are smart and um, really plan this out pretty nicely you will actually think about that in the front and uh, take the photos of the things that piano will actually see and place it on the piano if you forgot to do that you can get away with some other tricks for example go to the background let's name this background and just go with the lasso tool and select some rock parts so let's select this and i will control or command j to make a copy of it and put it in the front of piano so it's right there let's group everything here control or command g this is piano This is everything model. I will group everything again just to clean this out. Okay, and let's go inside here and let's take a coffee. Mm. 
Okay. So let me see. This is this is reflection. Reflection number one. Again, let's move this from this right here to the piano. So we will pretend that actually this is what this is reflecting here and don't laugh it's completely different uh, size and different uh, texture but you you can pretend nobody knows how is this on the other side so i will put it right there and uh, make it bigger even bigger rotate it like that press ok and put this into overlay or soft light let's go with the soft light blending mode create a mask right here and just erase everything else so Let's, you can use harder brush. So we can erase this. This will not be visible. But here it's okay. And then here, maybe even this leg will, but mm, we will not see that. Actually, I will delete it from here. I know that now it looks look like a big mess, but it will be okay, trust me. So like like this and sometimes it's easier to do opposite actually it's easier just to paint back what you want not like like this right so i will just do this and we have some rocky piano and it's sylvester stallone piano rocky piano okay forget about this and now lower the opacity like this see and we have it also what if you want to make it even more believable you can erase it from this part maybe like maybe with 50 percent. so let's let's go like this and then take this part where this this grass thing is copy this move it all the way up and do exactly the same thing put it in the overlay soft light blending mode oops put it right here rotate it maybe something like this however you want and this time we'll go opposite alt click on the layer mask and just reveal parts that you want to be visible okay like like this yeah it's looking bad but it will look good it needs to be first really bad to be able to look good not always but this time so let's see this is on 24 uh, I nailed it, both are 24. So now we can erase from this a little bit and uh, blend it a little bit better, bring back from this one with white color and just have fun with these stuff. And now you have like reflection here. Maybe this is too much. So I will go with maybe 20, let's see. Yeah, just the something, maybe even less. Maybe let's go with, I don't know, 14, no, 10, it's, let's go with 15. So just those small details that are not like straightforward visible will actually give a better subconscious uh, overall image in the viewer eyes. It will, it will make a more believable final result. Of course, you need to add a shadow from the model's hand here. Let's do it. So let's make it right here. Oops, hand shadow. And these, these kind of shadows you need to paint. So I will go with regular dark color, of this kind of shadow, put it in multiply blending mode. And I will just paint this 100% opacity and just try to figure it out. The finger will, mm, the finger is going, where is the sun? Sun is there, so it will go somewhere here. One finger, then we have the arm, the another finger, I don't know the point here is just to trick the viewer's eye that this is actually the shadow of of the hand maybe here is the thumb i'm not sure maybe and this is how it is let's erase it from here and now lower the opacity a bit because this is a reflective surface the shadow will be much brighter than it is and uh, here will be darker so we can go and make a layer mask again with the gradient map with the black to transparent we can go like like this actually let's go here go like this and 
and we can do something something like this maybe maybe 22 i don't know so this is really quick way to make a shadow you need to spend a little bit more time here and also i already said we need a contact shadow so let's go with a contact shadow here exactly the same thing multiply and just small small dot actually we need to put this below the model and just a small contact shadow right there and that's it also we can make everything no don't make it don't complicate it okay this is this is pretty much a fast way to do it um, okay not yet let me see so if we are happy with this i'm not happy with the dress color so let's go to the model in the model and uh, where is the color here oh it's here no i lose myself here it's here no this is a model yeah we don't need the model we just need a dress this is a dress okay it's here and what i like to do here I just want to going more towards like that maybe a bit brighter no like that's so small difference but you know what this is okay this is a little bit better so before it's more red and yellow and this is more like a magenta thing i will leave it like this so imagine that this is it we are happy with this we made everything perfectly which is not 100 percent perfectly because in this short amount of time you cannot nail everything this is a real life so you need for for this for me for this to be really nice i will probably spend twice as much time than i did it now for sure twice as much time if not more just to be sure that everything is good to to spend more time focusing on small details to perfect the shadow to perfect the reflections and uh, to nail a little bit a little bit more maybe the colors and image and so on and so forth but the point here is to match everything like we did here you you saw the main things what i did the all the steps and now what i like to do when i finish this i like just to add a little bit more color grade or just to add more contrast and maybe a little bit more clarity to everything so i will show you i will collapse everything and press shift Control alt e or shift command option e on a mac to merge everything visible into one layer like you can see right here and i will right click it and convert this into smart object i will not make this smaller or bigger i'm doing this just because i want to apply filters as a smart filter so that means that this will be undestructible so i will always be able to go back and change things in the filters you don't need to do it this way you can use some other methods like curves color balance or whatever and combine things together but i like to use filter and camera where it is it's here why because i have everything there especially in i don't know exactly when the camera is part of the photoshop as a filter maybe from cc or cs6 i'm not sure at all because it was a long time ago and uh, but from then i really love to use it before that actually what i did i saved this as a psd file and bring it back to lightroom and then play with things in lightroom bring it back to photoshop to maybe apply another filter like i'd like to use a nicolor fx pro and then export it as a final image so i always like to do this so here what i like to do First, I like to go to effects and apply the vignetting. Why? Well, because I want to bring the viewer's eyes more to the middle and not to the other part. So this is too much, of course, don't worry. I just want to show you what I'm doing. And also, I want to add a feathering. Feathering is, let's, let's not add a feathering. See how harsh edges are, like maybe somebody is looking through a telescope or something and if you go with the roundness like this you can have that effect actually so let's bring it back you can bring it more towards the middle if you want like like telescope this is cool <laughs> okay so let's do this and let's feather it out because i want to have a nice transition and then i just want a touch of it so before and after you can see it's not a big deal before and after maybe even less maybe like that okay before and after then what i like to do i like to go and uh, add a little bit more contrast here not too much you can always go crazy but 
just a bit to open shadows even more this tiny bit and here you can add a clarity to have more punchy look but this is like more like a dreamy scene so you can go opposite you can make everything more soft like this like a dreamy scene but i don't want too much i just want a bit and add a texture to bring the textures back the situation is pretty good here i can do this just to equalize colors a little bit again it's not too much because i pretty much like the colors here and i don't want to change the mood i can make everything a little bit more um, warmer see before and after before and after and also i can go to split toning and make shadows a little bit cooler just to have this split toning effect and move this to the right to affect only the darkest parts of the image so like this as you can see let me show if it's all the way to the right it will affect only the darkest parts if it's in the middle it will affect even mid-tones and darker parts if it's all the way to the left it will affect everything so we don't want that except the brightest highlights so i want almost all the way to the back and the saturation just a bit just a tiny bit so before and after pretty much good i will not change anything here except maybe i can go with sharpness so i can sharpen this a little bit pressing alt or option key i will play with the masking so by holding alt or option key i'm seeing this mask and everything that is white will be affected the black parts of the image will not be sharpened so i want something like this probably and the radius i can do the radius if the radius is too high you can see it's crazy big radius and i want this to be sharpened and this is actually a high pass filter playing with that in overlay blending mode but that's another story so i want smaller radius like this and let me see before and after pretty much nice before and after i'm happy with this i will press ok and uh, photoshop will do it that's it and why i did in the smart object because now if i don't like something i don't need to go all over it again i can just double click here and that's again maybe i don't want to warm maybe i want even warmer and so on and so forth you can change everything right guys that's it for this part i hope that you get some really cool ideas from this photo manipulation that you learn something before we jump to questions and answers wow there are so many questions here now it's that part where i need to answer all these things let me see let's move this like that all right uh i want to say something about this photo manipulation is really exciting process especially if you you're like me if you love these things love to create something that is not uh, possible to be created in real life or it's pretty expensive or you want to put your imagination into a life and uh, whatever this is a really cool way to do it but this is not something that can be done really fast i got a lot of questions on my youtube channel where i for you guys who don't know maybe you're seeing this for the first time i have a youtube channel just type nemanja sekulic and you at youtube and uh, there i get so many questions or complaints why the tutorials are so long why, why the tutorial is 20 minutes you know or maybe half an hour or something like that well to make an artwork in 20 minutes that's crazy amount of time it's, it's so small amount of time that it's not real so i'm in the tutorial i'm not making the perfect image i'm just showing you principles how to do it if i would do it for real you would watch me for hours it's not not practical so spend the time practice experiment it takes years to, sometimes it takes i know maybe six months to master something sometimes it takes five years if you want to expand your knowledge to learn the 3d stuff etc so it's not a thing that you can learn like this don't be lazy just go invest your time and then you can turn this even into business if you're getting real good but it won't be over the night All right let's go to questions uh so many things let's go back a little bit i will move this wait just just a second give me a second guys uh let's see let's see let's move this here okay let's make it bigger there's so many questions that i need to go through 
Okay, let's go from the beginning. No, 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 no. The sound is like a robot, all right. So it's something. If you uh, okay, if you create a campaign based on photo manipulation, is it needed that all original images have the rights for free use, or you can use a normal image from Google every, every ever though you are alter it almost on everything? Well, this is a great question. When you're doing anything, especially for a commercial um, projects, you need to have license for for everything. So all the images needs to have a license. It doesn't matter if you're you're manipulating the image and the image is almost not recognizable. You need to have a license in order to do it everything legally. So that's why every time when I'm doing photo manipulations for clients, I try to take my own photos or if I cannot take something, if I if it's maybe even cheaper to go online and search for some stock photos, I always go for either free stock websites where you can use those images for free there is a license that you can use it for free either go to paid stock websites and purchase the assets there like envato elements that i already mentioned on my youtube the latest youtube video check it out if you didn't envato elements is a great place to get not just photos but everything video music uh, web template, a lot of lot of cool, cool things so um, you cannot just take a photo from google you can have a lot of trouble you can be sued you can lost so much money for that and the client if you're doing for for a client the client won't hire you ever again you will have a bad reputation so always make sure to have licensed images so that's it right let's go to another question you can see okay okay good okay. okay there are a few questions i think uh, about these photos that um, actually this photo here there is a question if i can give you guys these uh, photos that i did today unfortunately no because this is a photo manipulation that i did for a client and you don't need it you don't need this photo manipulation in order to practice there are so many photo manipulation tutorials on my youtube channel and there will be so many photo manipulation tutorials so bear with me stay tuned uh, this is this is something just for you guys to show you to understand the principles and to see even one more example how everything is done especially in implementing 3d objects into scene making dress and things like that but every single photo manipulation is done on exactly the same principle take the elements match the perspective match the lights match the colors combine them together <laughs> voila you have it okay so let's go to um Okay, this is based on the okay, okay. What tool do you use to create the piano and the dress? I did it in a cinema 4D. So as you can see right here, this is a cinema 4D uh, program used to create anything, anything practically. Let me let me show you on my website. Anything uh, for as you can see it right here. These wait just a few seconds this is the, the these are the robots from uh, the movie world of uh, war of the worlds and i created in cinema 4d this uh, vehicle here uh, a lot of th this uh, whole scene the trees the everything except the models arms and the head are created in cinema 4d so cinema 4d is a program where you can create anything practically anything that you can imagine you just need to practice it it's a paid program it's not free it's awesome i'm using it i i start with the 3d studio max and maya but i switched to cinema 4d because it's more intuitive and easier to use and some things can be done faster for me as a photographer not a cg artist and i'm still learning this the 3d world is huge world of endless possibilities and much much bigger and complex than just a photoshop and that's why i'm still in the process of learning it but if you want to go for free blender is a free tool awesome tool free software that where you can again make everything that you can make in cinema 4d and also for free and there are so many tutorials online where you can learn how to use the blender right let's go to next next question which tablet do i use i'm using the wacom intus pro medium size tablet but basically there are so many good uh, brands like huon or xp pen that are even cheaper and has a great quality 
Do you usually sketch your ideas before start? Yes, yes, great question. I always sketch my ideas, but with that difference that sometimes I sketch it on a paper or tablet or in Photoshop, it doesn't matter, but I physically sketch it. But sometimes I sketch it in my mind. I just imagine the scene and I pretty much have a, I have pretty good visualization, so I don't need to put it on a paper realistically. I, I have it and that's it. Sometimes I did on a paper because if there's more people involved in the project and we are doing something more complex, then for everybody, it's much easier to see all these things on a sketch than just me trying to explain what's in my mind. Okay, so let's see. How can I, okay, that's not relevant. Mm, I already answered that same question. What is, what is, um, let's see now, okay. I will make a realistic shadow for model. Okay, there is a question of, uh, hey, how would you make a realistic shadow for the model and the piano? Okay, you, you saw it, but it's not uh, quite there because we didn't have too much time. And what resolution is the best for doing the photo manipulations? Guys, I'm finishing my first photo manipulation essential course that will be, I think, in the next two weeks, uh, ready to be in my, on my website on the store. I already answered all the things there, but I will quickly tell you there is no such thing as, as uh, like ideal resolution for photo manipulation. Depends where the where the final product, where the photo will be uh, displayed later. Is it for Instagram, for Facebook, or uh, maybe YouTube cover, or maybe it's uh, for print, for magazine, for books, for some billboard? I don't know. Depends on that. That will define your either aspect ratio or the resolution. Um, I, I I do want to learn 3D but confused on where to start. What do you suggest? I always suggest Cinema 4D just because of the how easy it is and how intuitive it is. But again, Blender is free and it's awesome, especially the new iteration, new version of Blender. It's really there. They're getting so, so good there. And where to start? Just start with the basic, you know, like a Photoshop, get to know the tools. What are the tools uh, to be used and uh, what objects can you make? And then start with some simple objects. Go, there are so many tutorials online. Start making anything that you want. Start from Cube and just try to, to build something. Follow one tutorial, then go from that, expand your knowledge. And uh, But you need to have in mind that it will take time to master 3D. So give yourself at least one year before give up on the 3D world. So at least one year. Okay. And okay, okay. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I, okay, these questions are for um, related to already what I did in a tutorial, but we'll skip that because it's too well. Let's see. Uh, thank you so much for informing us. Okay, how to train my imagination? I answered completely that question either in my new course that will be out soon, either on my YouTube channel, but quickly. Imagination can be trained in several different ways. One way is just to read the books because book is so good place to train imagination because when you're reading you're imagining things that you're reading and uh, everybody will imagine things differently and by reading more and more you're training that part of brain to imagine things better and by training that part of brain you will be better in imagining new things also by writing or by watching movies tv series but watching a movies tv series is better for finding inspiration of something but to train your imagination reading writing and uh, brainstorming so just try to imagine anything and brainstorm what that can be expand it put it in some situations in real life imagine reward whatever just work on that this is just short answer how to train your imagination okay how to complex uh, how to create a com complex complex uh, composite composition okay so for making really complex compositions 
the sketch is really important part because it's similar like when you're building a house you need to have a project for the cloud for the house it's not easy like you're making just the one room with a roof that that's pretty easy you have just the box with with triangle actually with with the roof but uh, for complex photo manipulation you need to have a sketch and then as i already said at the beginning gather the elements and make sure that all the elements are matched in perspective lights and later in photoshop in color so that's the way how you should how you should do it uh how do you manage depth of field in the background field in background shooting wait i cannot see uh -huh. do you use hyperfocal technique well no i don't use a hyperfocal technique at almost at all and uh, if i have some depth of field i usually don't do a photo manipulation with the shallow depth of field uh, i love to use wider angle lenses that's my style everybody has their own style but in case I need some shallow depth of field, uh, I will just take a photo of a background and based on that, I will add some elements, uh, either blur them or take a photo of the elements already blurred with the same focal length. So that's how I match it. Okay, okay, okay. What's the best place to learn Cinema 4D on internet? I, I don't know the best place. Uh, I know that I started with uh, Grayscale Gorilla uh, YouTube channel, but there are so many channels now that you can learn a few things here and there. I always recommend to learn from more sources because there are no two exactly the same channels either, uh, no matter if they're talking about the same thing. Like I have a Photoshop channel and the photo manipulation channel, but there are other people there who maybe talks about exactly the same thing, same techniques, but maybe you will feel that guy better. You will understand him better than me. Maybe you will understand me better than other guys depends on uh, person to person. So just go and search for Cinema 4D tutorials and try to find what is suit best for, for yourself. Okay, let's see. What's that in commercials? I don't know. Okay, question. How to train imagination? Okay, I already answered that. Let's go. Do you usually sketch your ideas? Yes, I already answered that. Okay, what a link. Icon between image and layer. Uh -huh. What is the link icon between image and the layer mask used for? As I already showed, if you link the mask and the icon uh, and the layer, you will simultaneously move both the layer and the masks, and then the mask. If you are unlink it, you can just move the layer and mask will be in the one place. So basically, let me show you really quickly. Right here, if I create something, let's create a new layer. So Let's create this. This is my super mega giga creation. And I create a layer mask. And layer mask, I want to do just one dot like this. OK. So if I move everything that is linked, I will move everything together, you can see. But if I unlink it, the mask, that circle, will stay here. I will just move everything else. I will moving, I'm moving my layer, as you can see. So the mask is on the same place. Or I can just move a mask and uh, the layer will still be on the same place so this is this is difference okay let's see um okay okay so okay uh, the let me translate this question the advice is for uh, young people how to start with this this profession especially in a place like serbia and guys i'm from serbia so those are uh, people from the same country well it doesn't matter where you're from it doesn't matter because internet today is a huge place where you can place yourself put yourself out there and know and get more people know about you and your work so first of all my advice to everybody who want to start this and especially want to make business out of it to make to want to make a blah, 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 to, they want to learn more and uh, to sell uh, their work out is to practice and make a portfolio portfolio is a really important part because portfolio will tell your clients what you can do and the clients is interested in that part if they're paying something they want to know what are they paying for do can you make something that they they want to be made for their brand or commercial or whatever so just practice a lot every single day if you're serious about this practice every single day enjoy give yourself a time make a portfolio and uh, when you have a portfolio 
you can put it out there. There are so many free websites like um, Behance.net, really good place to put your portfolio, actually to put uh, every single photo from portfolio and how you get it to go some step-by-step step there because this is, this is what clients want to see. And uh, I got a lot of jobs actually from Behance.net. A lot of clients found me there and contact me to do some kind of job or make your website or go and find a lot of other places to, to put your work. Uh, can you, sh okay, let me see, do you speak Romanian? No. Wait, how to, the, <laughs> how to get along with Photoshop once you're done with the basic stuff, how to get along with Photoshop was, I'm not sure that I understand this question, but when you when you know the basic stuff in Photoshop, then go a little bit more advanced. What by advanced I mean try to figure it out what you want to make of it. It's I always like to compare with this. If you're a carpenter and you want to make a chair or whatever, you first need to know the tools. When you get used to the tools and master the tools and practice how to use them on the basic stuff, just make a regular square chair. Then you need to be more, you, you can be more creative and make some nice curves, do some, I don't know, decoration on the chair, whatever, and go a little complex and more complex, more complex. And you will get idea from every single project to expand it, or maybe go online and see what kind of chairs are there. Can you replicate this chair and so on and so forth. So when you're learning and in the learning process, it's always good to replicate other people's work and not to put other people's work online as your work. That's 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 bad actually that's that's not not fair from your side so like i'm doing free youtube tutorials you can learn a lot of things there for free and i'm giving all the assets there so you can practice exactly do, copy exactly the same thing that i'm doing it but unfortunately i'm seeing a lot of people taking those assets copying exactly the same thing and placing online on uh, instagram or with uh, facebook wherever and like look what i did that's okay but no, don't do that make something on your own practice on my work and then change something do something on your own change the background you use different assets don't copy exactly the same thing it's okay when you're practicing and that's one of the really good ways to practice it to be able to see if you can match the same result as somebody else but then add something on your own there okay let's see Yeah, uh, I already said I will launch the course pretty soon. So you're using a gaming PC or no, no, I'm not using gaming PC. I, I basically don't play games too much because I don't have a time for that. I love to play Titanfall 2. So that's the only game that I like to play from time to time. Uh, which banking series uh, would you recommend for graphic designers? Uh, there, there are two basically uh, banking series that I prefer sw and pd sw is more orientated for photographers and they're awesome sharp uh, white color gamut monitors and this is my main monitor and uh, colors are so accurate and everything is perfect and another it's my second monitor it's pd 3200 and i'm using this monitor mostly when i'm doing some 3d work because it's bigger 32 inch and uh, again colors are awesome everything is good and sharp and pretty nice, but I prefer SW, especially for my photography work retouching. And this one is for anything else, video editing I love to do on this one, 3D work and, and so on and so forth, especially web browsing because it has that uh, blue light cancellation, actually warmer mode to rest your eyes from a blue light. So it's really cool. And uh, can you tell me more things about 3D? Okay, I can, I will not go into details now for 3D. There are a lot of 3D software. So, for example, I will show you something. See this dress right here and the dress that I did for this tutorial. There are different dresses, but it's not made in a Cinema 4D. In Cinema 4D, I just reshape it a little bit and render it out. But it's made in a software called Marvelous Designer. It's awesome software for making clothes. You can make anything. A lot of, you know, that movie Ted with the bear and the... What's the Marky Mark? I, I forgot. Mark Wahlberg. I don't know. I forgot the name. 
and uh, that that bear has has uh, some clothes. It's bear is CGI bear, and the clothes are made in in the Marvel's designer. A lot of the CGI clothes are made in that program. It's awesome program, and you you can learn it pretty much easily. It's not hard at all, and there are some tutorials online which you can follow it. And uh, for example, where it is? Let let me see if I can if I can find it here. This Batman. All right, so. This guy, this is completely 3D work, and it's not made in Cinema 3D or Marvel's Design or anywhere. It's made in ZBrush. ZBrush is a sculpting 3D tool. It's an awesome tool, so you can make something like this. This is completely made there. It took me, I don't know, a few days, but this is one of the first projects that I created there. Also here, this photo. As you can see, the body for those two guys, this is me like Green Lantern and my friend Kraka as a Sinestro. So I made those bodies those costumes in a ZBrush because I, I didn't have costumes in real life and I wanted to have something like that. And also the trash can papers, hydrant here, and this sign all trespassing is made in Cinema 4D. So everything is Cinema 4D and the uh, building is actually from the Germany, from the Berlin, when I was there doing a project for a client. Also this, this uh, crazy fish is made in ZBrush and um, octopus, uh, part from this guy it's again in zbrush and everything else is uh, cinema 4d except his body and also helmet is made in zbrush and so on and so forth so you can do a lot of things in in a uh, in a zbrush okay thank you for webinar it was one of the, you're really welcome i was glad to do it okay let me see mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do you test colors from pr for print and the web? Okay, this is a huge topic. I will definitely, I cannot explain it right now here, but I will mention it something. There are color profiles, like three, three most popular, sRGB, Adobe RGB uh, 1998, and the Profoto RGB color profile. They are different in amount of colors that they are showing. So sRGB is the, the narrowest color gamut profile and uh, Adobe RGB is a little bit wider and Profoto is really wide. So web, for web, you always want to go with sRGB color profile because that's a standard because a lot of um, monitors, uh, phones, a lot of uh, devices cannot show more than sRGB and that's why it's standardized because uh, all devices will show the colors that are in sRGB color profile. If you want to go to a print, Printers can print in the Adobe uh, RGB color profile, so that profile can show even more, even wider color gamut, and uh, you can have richer colors there, and your print can be better than just working with sRGB. So that's the difference. If I always like to work in Adobe RGB, and then if I want to put it to web, I uh, convert it to sRGB, save it as a JPEG and uh, it's converted to web and also if you're working with the adobe rgb go and work always with the 16 bits uh, color that so that's important uh when we finish <laughs> when we will finish monkey business too oh one day that's my friend we were making some cool project but it took too long because of my fault i i'm working a lot so i cannot <laughs> do everything i can make a copy of myself then I can maybe finish everything let's see what kind what kind of job wait 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 how can I expand this mm. okay let's try like this what kind of job opportunities are there when it comes to photo manipulation I'm a graphic design student and I notice that we don't use Photoshop too much we use illustrate illustrator in design okay uh, that's the illustrator and in designer for different it's like for printed media basically and uh, it's for different kind for vector design and uh, maybe making uh, magazines or books and so on and so forth you, you already know you're using it but photoshop is for more for this kind of uh, visual design and uh, there are a lot of job opportunities so anything that is related to any kind of commercial here it is photo manipulation are awesome for that because with photo manipulation, you can, you can, um, how to say, uh, catch viewers' attention even better than with the regular photo because you can make something 
that is different that is not seen everywhere like a stock photos there are a lot of stock photos used in the commercial and they're all the same like uh, two people are um, i don't know for example we want some kind of love scene two people are together maybe smiling hugging i don't know whatever but they're same and same and same but with photo manipulation you can create anything that you want so for example this photo right here as you can see uh, this is photo made for one book cover and uh, i wanted to to make something different and this is what we came up and it was really nice especially for a book cover and this building is completely made in the cinema 4d because i wanted this building this kind of building but i couldn't find this building in real life with the lighting that i need this is like a moon lit in the building from a radi radial um, light source so i couldn't find it i made it in a cinema 4d so you can use this for any kind of commercial whatever you want Whatever you think you can find a good title for this, this can sell your product, but this is for for a book cover. Okay, do you have a tutorials on Cinema 3D? It's not 3D, it's 4D. No, I don't have the tutorials. A lot of people are asking for that. There are so many great, awesome tutorials online. I already said I'm not so good in the Cinema 4D, actually in 3D world. I know a few things. I be I'm able to make some things for my projects, but I'm still not even close as good and comfortable as I am in, in Photoshop. So that's why I'm not making a Cinema 4D tutorials. Maybe, maybe I will do something in the future, something maybe easier, who knows, we will see. Okay, do you have a masterclass for people instead of, uh, no, I don't have anything for Cinema 4D, but I am on the way to maybe make uh, one tutorial combining elements from 3D uh, and uh, photos so where i will not tutorial like a course where i will show actually from start to finish process how i did something in cinema 4d for that particular situation and how i combine it with the photo manipulation that will be somewhere in the future i am finishing my first course then i am making my second course that will be awesome actually in second course i will show this kind of stuff how to make this this kind of hairstyles any kind of hairstyles so Okay, that will be somewhere in the future. Let's go. And da, 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 da. What advanced tutorials will be there in the future when you uh, Patreon reach? I, I'm already making some tutorials because I'm not relying on Patreon. Unfortunately, it's uh, not going as uh, fast as I uh, thought it would be. So thank you so much, everybody who are who are uh, supporting me on Patreon. It means a lot to me because this is the only way that I'm making for my my living, so uh, it's crazy. In this moment of time, I'm I'm not making too much photo manipulation tutorials for uh, YouTube, just because I'm finishing my first course, and of course, the Patreon users will have some nice discount there. And uh, I don't have time for everything. I'm just one person who doing doing that. A lot of questions about Cinema 4D. Okay, apart from Photoshop and Cinema 4D, do you use any other software? Yes, as I already said, Marvelous Designer, ZBrush. I used um, this um, Maya and the uh, 3D Studio Max. Also, of course, for video editing, Premiere Pro and um, uh, After Effects and a few other softwares here and there, but those are the mo things that I mostly use. Okay. Dalić, you to a webinar. Yes, webinar is recorded and you will get a copy of the webinar. And I think that's the case. Can you, uh, Valentina, can you please con confirm me that? Okay, now let's see this. Um, maybe you can read this out loud. I have, I also have Wacom Intus Pro M tablet. Yes, okay, uh, you, you will get a copy of the vendor. I also have Wacom Intus Pro tablet for years now. And people can buy them easily online on eBay used. Yes, of course you can you you can you can buy if you want to Wacom tablet and they are a bit more expensive that than a competition like Huion and XP Pen. You can purchase a used tablet. I have my my tablet and I'm still using it uh, for for I don't know se seven years, eight years, something like that. Older Wacom Interest Interest Pro and tablets so they're really really good and it will they will last for a long time okay let's see here 
where did you learn photo shopping recommendation well because i started when i had when i was 20 years old and it was year 2000 youtube well, wasn't there at all there are not so many online tutorials the internet was a dial-up internet so you know you dial a phone and on and then you make a connection and so on and so forth so how i learned photoshop is just by experimenting only by experimenting i was self self-taught here and uh, i practice a lot but really a lot every single day and uh, that's how i learned i didn't watch any single photoshop tutorial and uh, to to be to make the story even better in that time i was studying uh, electrical engineering and i fall in love in photoshop and photography and i learned photography and photoshop and when i got better and better i, I realized that i don't want to be electrical engineer so i i, I don't want to finish that and i quit my faculty and start to work more with the photoshop and start with my first jobs payments clients and so on and so forth and then when i was 30 years old i signed up for graphic design faculty just to get a paper after three years of studying and uh, there i didn't learn too much new stuff because i already know everything and more because i i work already for years but what i learned on the faculty is some basics of a 3d so now especially of maya so i start started there and then i watched youtube tutorials and regularly learn things it's today is much easier because you have so many free tutorials online and you can learn and be better like this one year of uh, studying photoshop with online tutorials and making photo manipulations or whatever retouching for beauty portraits or whatever you can be so good in one year today because you have everything on the plate on youtube so it's crazy simple only you need to be really persistent and to work not just to watch the tutorial and then okay i understand it and then leave it the practice is what is important you need to practice practice and practice more okay that's it uh, that's the same question okay mm, let's see when do you use 72 dpi and when do you use 300 dpi um, it's it's a really good question 72 dpi or dpi pixels per inch is or dot per inch is used when you want to put your photo on the web so 72 dpi is the density of the pixels it's more than enough for web and if you want to do it for a print from 240 all the way up it's uh, always better to ask the printing company what they need in able to print quality really quality print I never use personally i never print anything that is higher than 300 um, dpis but maybe for some things print companies maybe asking more but 300 is pretty enough okay um i was wondering how do you usually charge clients uh is it by time or do you have a fixed price which one do you think is the best i think the most fair for the artist is charging by time but uh, this seems a bit frightening for the clients well this is an awesome question and this is this is like a universal question and there is no like universal answer it's it's simple but it's complex complex so my my answer is that sometimes i'm charging per hour so per time sometimes i'm charging per project depends how we make a deal is if the project is really big and take a long time to finish then of course we will not do per time or per hour because it's useless crazy especially for the client and uh, then we will make a price per project again if something is pretty short it takes few hours here and there then i'm always uh, charging per hour and also uh, there is no like universal price that you can put per hour if you're really experienced if you're doing if you're working fast and if you have a good quality product then you can charge more per hour if you are not that good then then uh, you you can you can charge less because you need to be really experienced in order to to put the price higher so and not just experience but to have a good quality product there okay just just a second um 
Okay, just a few more questions and we're we're done. Let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's go all the way down. Let's see. Let's see here. Uh, yeah. Gigatron ima da se kupi tablet. Okay, that was for Serbian people. Now, do you have any advice on taking us on uh, no, 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 taking notes? No, I don't know. Okay. And uh, let's see. Uh, what is this? Is it possible to contact you and ask you for advice if needed? How much would you be for an hour? Okay. Uh, right now, I'm overwhelmed with, uh, with the projects and uh, things that I need to do. So I don't have almost any spare time but uh, usually yes i do consultations and you need to just uh, send me an email on my email on website so info at nemanjasekulic.com or go to nemanjasekulic.com and uh, you have you can find my website wherever you 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 want on the bank you site on google just type my name and that's it and uh, we can make a deal by by email so that's the answer for that and uh, let me see. How to merge mechanical engineering in Photoshop? Well, you can make some mechanical stuff in Photoshop. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, that's it. Do you use the channel mixer? Yes, I use it from time to time. Mm. Are you using PC or laptop with what specs? Well, I'm using both PC and laptops, and I have uh, I have actually a review of uh, my laptop that I'm currently using is um, Asus with dual screen, so you can check that on uh, YouTube. And my PC, I'm using a PC with uh, NVIDIA 1080 graphic cards with uh, 32 gigs of RAM and i7 77. Uh, zero something i forgot to name the process so i7 processor and that's it okay guys so uh will i get the access to the session via youtube now you will get the link on the email so you will get the link on the email to to rewatch this if you want and i will finish uh, isn't on patreon 40 already talk yes it's once one uh, on patreon you will see if you're going to my patreon you will see i have few um tires there so uh one one is uh, 40 and one is 100 dollars depends on the time uh, and yes it's one per month session and we can talk about anything you want i already did a lot of these sessions and uh, it's really fun so this is basically it i will stop here thank you so much for investing your time and being here with me through this webinar i hope that you learn something out of it uh, that you maybe get a perspective for something in the future maybe you want maybe i inspired you to uh, create even more photo manipulations or to start making photo manipulations or if you're already on that path to maybe start doing some 3d or whatever so if anything if i can help you somehow you can send me an email but as i already said in this period i'm overwhelmed with a lot of things so I maybe won't answer all you guys, but uh, this is how it is. Thank you one more time. You can find me on my YouTube channel. You can find me on my website, Instagram, Twitter. Instagram is the place that I use mostly to do any kind of updates, informations uh, via Insta story. So you can find me there also on Twitter too. Good luck. Have a great evening, day, night, wherever you're from. And see you again next time. And until then, we can see each other on YouTube. Bye-bye.